what's good my people obviously the way the season end we're disappointed and we need answers we need to know what's going to happen because this is possibly going to be the most critical off season of all time so i'm going to briefly speak about my opinions on how it ended and what needs to change obviously if you're new to the channel like subscribe my ig twitter's in the description down below and it is my first face cam video so hello people but you know what let's just get straight into it so i'm not gonna lie the way this season ended was very disappointing obviously you can't control certain factors like joel not being healthy but that's almost a given every off season but there's certain things which have to change the performance of tobias harris i'm not going to get onto too much because he's gone tobias is not going to be here next season the sheer lack of effort is unacceptable and on top of that, you've got a lot of this roster who are able to go. I believe the only players down on the contract next season so far are Tyrese. Well, he has a cap hold, but he will be back. So Tyrese, Joel Embiid, Ricky Council. And I think that's practically it. And then Puri's got a non-guaranteed contract. There's not that many players. So Daryl Morey's got some big decisions to do. Are we going to star hunt? Are we going to build around certain depth we have and just get a bunch of guys around the 15, 10 million mark so we can be deep like a New York team? Or are we going to get nobody? Because at the end of the day, you've got to be strategic. If you're targeting a guy like Paul George or a guy like LeBron, hypothetically, there are 30 other teams, 20 other teams who are going to want those guys at the right price or LeBron at any price, really. Meaning that if you put all your eggs in one basket, those other free agents who you might not have prioritized, if you don't land Paul George or LeBron, they could easily get snapped up, meaning that we get left with nothing. So it's critical that Daryl Morey approaches this offseason with pure strategy and what we need. The way Paul George looked in last night's elimination game, I'm not going to make a determining factor, but you've got to think, is that the type of guy that we need at 35 years old on a four or five year max contract that's going to help us? Can he help? Sure thing. On the contract though, I'm not too sure, but we're going to go into detail about that in a minute. Now, another name that got brought up is Jimmy Butler. Okay, cool. That's contingent on him and the Heat not agreeing on an extension. But if I'm being honest, conversation needs to be had there because Jimmy Butler is eligible for an extension that takes him up to nearly $66 million a year for a 35-year-old Jimmy Butler. Now, six of hands are funny. For the pure reason that Jimmy's a great player, we regret not bringing him back here. Nostalgia, we want Jimmy and Joel back. But think about the, log the logistics. The reason why a lot of fans don't want Paul George here is playoff choker one and health. Jimmy Butler's health has not been the best over the past few seasons. He's missed a lot of games in the regular season. He was injured his postseason and he's older. So that doesn't make sense why you wouldn't want Paul George for one reason, but you want Jimmy Butler for another. When they're both have, they both have issues with their health. And on top of that, Paul George is a free agent acquisition. You can add to what we have on the roster right now. Jimmy Butler, you'd have to trade for. You'd have to give up assets for, and it's not going to be cheap, and give him an extension. So I would monitor that situation too, but you've got to be really smart on how you approach it, because if you're not, this could end up really, really badly. However, alongside all of this, you've got to think log logically, right? How do all of these guys fit, and what do we need? So we saw the hole we had this offseason was, I mean, this past season, sorry, was when Joel's not fully healthy and Tyrese is misfiring or one or the other, we're lacking that other guy who can help us. So I understand why a guy like PG might be required. However, it's imperative that you don't discard the rest of the roster because we missed the guy like De'Anthony Melton in spot minutes because he wasn't healthy. We missed the presence of a Robert Covington because he wasn't healthy, in my opinion. So getting guys of that mold in free agency, which aren't going to be cheap, they're not going to be at the minimum, is imperative. So you've got to make sure that you prioritize and still leave money for that. We still do have a space for another max slot. And if we get one max player, we still have the mid-level exception, other kind of things like that. So there's ways we can maneuver around with money. I just think it's really critical that we don't fall into the same hole. We have five tradable first round picks. That's quite a lot. We have a lot of cap space. When it comes to assets on the roster that we can trade, I'm not too sure, but that's another approach you must think about. If you gain a Paul George, you're not gonna trade Paul George. You're kind of getting that as an asset for your team. Meaning that you have five first round picks, but what players on your roster have any value? Versus, I'm not saying you get these kind of players, but if you get a mixture of Tyus, Malik Monk and just other guys on the free agency market for 20, 20, 15, 25. If a star then becomes available, you have a plethora of contracts you can put together and an array of first round picks which you can attach to that to make a lucrative offer to whoever becomes available. 
A guy like Brandon Ingram's been throwing around too. There's been a lot of names thrown around in the past couple of days. I don't know why, where they've come from, but here we go. And I think B.I. is an interesting one for the pure reason why he's had a bit of an underwhelming season. Again, health. Been an issue. And he hasn't really taken that leap a lot of people thought he would. Now, with that being said, I still feel like Brandon Ingram's a guy you could get at the right price. And a lot of Sixers fans aren't sold on him, but he is only 26, I believe. And like I said, I believe he has one more year left in his deal, maybe two. The price you'll be paying for Brandon Ingram at $38, $39 million a year, in my opinion, is a better investment than acquiring a guy like Butler at 35 years old. Again, if you're just all in on next season and you're able to build a competent roster, if Butler becomes available, trading whatever makes sense because you're maximizing that two-year window of the remaining of Butler and Joel's prime. I agree with that. My issue is... This franchise has not shown any ability to provide and make a competent roster. Meaning that if you get a guy like Jimmy, we are not the Heat. We are not a good, well-run organization. We're probably going to have a bunch of loonies around these guys anyway. So it's important that if you do go all in, you must get the surrounding pieces around them correct. Otherwise, we're going to be finished. So this is like a summary video because there's a lot of directions we can go in. A lot of things being thrown out there. We've got things logically. How can these things really help us? What direction is the best? And how can his front office maximize the things we have, the assets we have to utilize? I'm not really sure. But when it pertains to the guys on our roster that I would potentially keep, you're looking at Ubre, probably. Nico Batum, at the minimum. I know a lot of fans are in love with Batum, but he was nice for what it was worth. But this factuation needs to go at the minimum, fine. Cameron Payne at the minimum, fine. Lowry at the minimum, maybe. Um, Rocco, them knees are cooked, but his skill set he provides is good. But with them knees, I'll probably say no. But yeah, the Anthony Melton, again, he's not going to get a minimum. The team's going to throw him $7, 8000000 million here and there. But I don't really know if a guy like D-Melt with his health and the back injury, especially how critical back injuries are and how much they linger on is worth keeping around. So I'll probably say D-Melt and... Probably no, unless it's at the minimum, which is not going to happen. Buddy healed. I know a lot of Sixer fans have been saying, keep Buddy here. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to lie. That is very price dependent. There's certain guys like D'Angelo Russell and other guys you can think of around the league who, when it comes to the playoffs, aren't reliable. I'm not comparing Buddy Hill to D'Lo at all by any stretch of the imagination. But yes, he had one really good game six, but he was unplayable for the first two, three, four games of the season, I mean, of the playoffs, which led him to have DMPs in the remaining two before game six. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So you've got to think, if I'm paying Buddy Hield 10, 15, 20 million dollars, is that going to be a 10, 15 million dollars that's going to be redundant at the end of the bench? Or is he going to be able to contribute? So again, another price dependent because we don't want to have money tied up to these guys who are on the court or meant to be on the court but are negatives. We can't have any more Tobiases who are meant to be providing us this, that, and the third, but are useless. But because of the money they're earning, you have to play them. We don't need that. We need productive, bet good value for money players. So for that reason, a guy like Buddy Hill coming back should be very price dependent. But the kind of mold of players we should be looking for is three-point shooting because it pissed me off how in the Knicks series uh they seem to have Miles McBride and Dante DiVincenzo, these guys who can hit threes at stupid rates in the sense where you feel like you're, you're creating a 10, nine point lead and then DiVincenzo hits the three, Miles McBride hits the three before you know it's a fucking two point game. We need those kind of guys. I don't know how you're going to find them, whether it's through the draft, whether it's through trading, I don't know. But it's imperative you gain these kind of guys. And on top of that, players like Kelly Oubre, obviously you're not going to find a Kelly Oubre just there. But I'm talking about the mold of guys who aren't necessarily a star player, but have the ability to score. Kelly Oubre wasn't afraid of the moment. If he was, he, if he got the ball when Joel was hesitating to shoot when it's a two-point game, Kelly's banging that from the corner and making it. Or at least showing the heart and the will. You need more guys like that in different positions. And most importantly from all, of all, the centre position. Because, my lord, the backup centre in this city has not been the best for time. Paul Reed made a lot of leaps in the past couple of seasons, but this offseason, he was genuinely awful. And that $7 million contract, oof, not looking the best. Now it's non-guaranteed. You have the ability to waive it, I'm pretty sure, and just wipe your hands of that deal. But I feel like it's important that we go after a guy like Andre Drummond, who's a 
fan favorite here for what he was obviously given and bringing to the table. I definitely say his kind of value is needed because it will be nice to have a big who can just hold their own and grab rebounds because Drummond was coming in, averaging almost eight, nine rebounds a game off the fucking bench. We need a guy who can come off the bench and our teammate again dominate on the boards. Drummond would fill that hole. So I definitely go off the guy like that. But like I said, there's a lot of directions we could go in. A lot of options out there. That's why I'm not getting paid to make these decisions. That's why you're not getting paid to make the decisions. The general managers, the Elton Browns of the world, the Daryl Morris, the owners like Josh Harris, they got to sit, Josh Harris, sorry, they got to sit down and make these decisions, not us. And like they've done over the past couple of years, which is fuck it up, they can't afford to this time. But that's just my opinions. Thank you guys so much for listening. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. First came face cam video, say hello in the comment section. Bye guys. And I'll be, rep I'll be responding to comments, all of that stuff there. But I'm drained as hell. Like, it's a shame there's going to be no more Sixers ball to flip in November, October. I don't care about the preseason. That's basically nothing. So, you know, if there's any draft prospects you want me to look at, might as well make a video on them, see what they're saying, see if they can add any value to the team. But other than that, stay blessed, my people. Have a great weekend. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, all of that shit. And just, yeah. Let me know in the comment section down below. Peace.